Hey, what is up guys, Sam here, and welcome back to episode 4 of the Discord Bot Coding Series. This coding series is brought to you by Salad. Salad is an easy to use application that allows you to earn money while you're not using your computer. Salad uses your computer's graphics card to mine cryptocurrency and allows you to redeem rewards such as Discord Nitro, Visa gift cards, Amazon gift cards, and so much more. Salad is an official Discord partner with a Discord server of over 40,000 members. With almost 900,000 people already using Salad, why not sign up today? Use code TDE2 for two times your earnings for a limited time only. Thank you to Salad for sponsoring this series. So in this episode, it's going to be a bit less coding heavy than the previous ones. And we're going to focus on having a look at the Discord.js documentation. Now this will basically be your holy bible for uh, Discord.js for coding JavaScript. This is what you'll need to be looking at. So I'm going to show you today how to use it because it can look a bit intimidating at first. But once you boil down a few of the facts and how to use it, I'm sure you'll find it really easy to use. So we're going to head down firstly to look at the client section. So as you can see in here, this is what you can run on the client, which as I've said at the start, the client is just the bot in our case. It's a new Discord client and that's stored in our bot. So for example, if we look at this event here, ready, we can head back over to the docs and we'll see under events, if we have a little scroll down, we'll see there is the ready event, we can click it, emitted when the client becomes ready to start working. So you can read the events when they're emitted, so there's ones such as, like if we swap that in with role create, this would run every time a role is made, we can swap in whatever events we'd like here, and if you see under it, it lists what data we get through. So we can see role create, we get the role that was made and we can see it's of type role. So for example, if I go back to here and I do bot.on role create, as you can see, there's autofill there as well. You can see if we head back to the docs that you get a role and it's of type role. So if we open up type role, we can see all the properties and methods we can do with this role. So let's say um, we just, we're gonna take in the role here. So as you can see, we have a parameter. We're gonna take in the role from this event. So it's basically like role create, this is what it's giving us. This is how we'll, this is what we'll do to process it. So, for example, if we do uh, console.log role.name, we can log the name of the role out to the console. We could also uh, do something like role.set color, and let's just make it uh, let's make it aqua. So if we head over to Discord now and we make a new role, you'll watch as we create the role it instantly becomes aqua. You saw the little update, originally it was gray, it became aqua. And if we go back to the console, it is logged out, new role. So new role is actually happens whenever you click that plus button there. So if we were to change this to red, restart it, and then make another role, you'll see new role logged out and red is the color it's set to. So you might, want to wait until the role is actually updated as a name. So what you can do is you can have something like role update. So bot.on role, that's capitals, role update. And make sure your capitals are the same as mine because um, it is case sensitive. So you can't just have any capitals you want. So role update, what we can do is then we can change the color to red down here. So for example, now if we put the red in here, if we head back over to discord and we go over to roles, and we create a new role, let's call it testing role. You'll see that there's no red yet. It hasn't, if we then update it by pressing save changes, you'll see now it becomes red as the role update event has run instead of the role create. So as you can see, we did get the new role out again, but it didn't actually update until the role had something changed about it, which was setting the name to testing role. So there's some cool ways you can use events. There's plenty more events you can look at. So. If we go up to here, we can see, um, for example, there's ones relating to threads, a new Discord feature. There's ones relating to guild member add. So you might want to use this when people are invited to the server for the first time or when people join. You can have it so it's for every, when every time a guild member joins. If we do, for example, bot dot on uh, guild member add member. So we're taking in the member this time, which is a guild member. We can look down here and see that we can see the members. I will want to mention the member's username actually, and I can't see it in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look down these options and I can see the word user here. 
So there's two very distinct um, ways to have a user. There's either the user object or there's the guild member object. So user will basically give everything about the user itself regardless of what server it's on. So for example, when the user's account was made, uh, the user's ID, the user's tag, the username, it will give all of the profile kind of level details. But when you go to something like guild member, it now gives the user's roles, the user's nickname, the permissions they have. So if you want to get like avatars or information like that, you're looking more towards the user side of things or people's usernames. If you're looking to get roles or looking to update roles or looking to do anything in regards to a server, you'll want guild member. So what we can do here is actually have a look. So I want to send them a message. So it will say sends message to this channel here, but keep in mind for users, the channel is their DMs. So we're going to be sending them a DM. So let's head back here. Let's do uh, member.send and let's find my username parameter here. So we have username. So we basically need to do, if I can go back to the top here, member.user dot username. What we can do here is go member, oh, sorry, hello there, member.user.username. As you can see, it even does pre-fill it in for you there as well. So what that will do now is it would say, hello there, Sam, if I was to join. And that's uh, a really useful thing. I've seen a lot of servers have welcome messages and things like that. So it's a great way just to easily have that set up on your server. So if we look into some things in relation to channels, just to have a sort of mess around, uh, if we had to channels, we can see uh, there's all the information you can get about a channel, but we actually want to head back to the client and then look at the channel events. So if we look at channel create, for example, I'll show you one of the differences here. So if we do bot.on channel create channel, so we're pulling the channel through this time. And let's just do console.log channel.name. So if we head over to the Discord now and we go and make a channel, head back here, yeah, make a new channel. Unlike the roles, it doesn't send out a notification the channel was made yet. The event won't be ran until you actually press create channel and therefore you have to fill in the name. So with the roles, instantly when you press make new role, it will run that role create. But for channel, you have to make the channel and then it will log the name of the channel test. So that's some useful information there if you're trying to manage roles or if you're trying to make a bot, for example, that logs out different events. Just make sure you know that role create and role update, you should probably be using role update. And for channel create, you, you stick to channel create instead of channel update. So let's give an example again of just looking at a different part of the docs. Um, let's just say I have a, you can even, I'll actually use a search up here. So I have a guild. So if you don't know guilds are known as servers. So basically you discord JS and discord knows them as guilds. So if we search for guild up here, we will now see the server properties. So obviously there's a lot more properties here for a server. So we can have a look at these and let's say, for example, we wanted to get the servers icon. We can get that through here. If we wanted to get um, the owner's ID, there's plenty of properties you can get through here. So really your best friend with the docs is just figuring out where things are coming from. So for example, in here, guild member add, since I've double checked in the client section, if I go to guild member add, I know that it's, giving, it's going to give me this guild member type of object here. And by knowing that, and by sort of going from the source of where things come from, I now know all the properties that I can run on that user and all the information I can get. So the docs are an extremely powerful way of coding with Discord JS and making sure that you are make, just making it easier for you to find the things you need to find. And obviously there's support servers out there you can ask. But if you can figure out how to use the documentation yourself and to use it well, which may require a bit of practice and just over time figuring out how to look up what you want to find out, if you can figure that out, it's a lot better than having to go to support servers and waiting for other people to help you. So I hope this video about the docs has helped and I hope that you have a look through it and figure some things out. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.